Hello! Welcome to the Lee Code series where we solve Lee Code problems together so that you can prepare for your technical interviews and get that internship or job of your dreams. So today we're kicking off this series with Lee Code problem 412, FISBUS. If you've done any interview prep so far, you've most likely come across FISBUS. It is a staple of technical interview prep. It's super easy and if you're just starting out with data structures and algorithms then this one is going to feel hopefully quite comfortable uh, if it doesn't don't sweat it you're just getting started and we're just getting started here so there will be a lot more to do and to learn but I wanted to start with this very easy one for two main reasons the first one being that I'm new at this, maybe you're new at data structures and algorithms, maybe you just found out what lead code is. If you're looking for lead code problem solutions, then most likely you've been on lead code for quite a while already and you've struggled with it and you've... <sighs> am I projecting my own experiences? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. But anyway, you've most likely struggled with lead code at some point. So the purpose of this whole series is to help you get through it mostly emotionally because I remember how difficult it was to stay consistent with it. I struggled to stay consistent with it every day and so I'm hoping that this series can give you that motivation and that drive to keep putting in a little bit of work every day whenever you find that time. Now back to the reasons why I chose FizzBuzz as the first problem of the series. One, because of course it's super easy, so it'll get me comfortable with this whole thing and I'm sure I'll make many mistakes. I apologize in advance for that. Feel free to comment down below any different solutions that you've come across, that you've come up with, and help each other through these problems as well. I am no expert here whatsoever. I've just gone through it. I am a computer science student and I've had one internship so I've successfully gone through the technical interview process once. <laughs> and that's all you need. So all of this practice is to get that one yes. Now the second reason why I've chosen this problem is because there's something else that I want to include in this video. And that is the framework that I want us to apply when we first see a new problem or an old problem. I'll be talking about the umpire method. I'll go over what that stands for, where it came from, how I learned about it, and hopefully that will allow us to solve problems in an easier, more organized way so that you always know what you need to be doing, even if the problem that you come across is something that you have no idea how to start and how to solve, then you can follow these steps and know where you need to be at at each point and it'll help you come up with a solution. Even if it's not the best solution, the most ideal one, the best in time or space complexity, you'll get a solution that you can talk through so that you don't sit at your interview like, oh shoot, I have no idea what to do. And this helped me a lot. So I wanted to use this problem as that base so that we can apply it to something very easy and then over time, we can use this umpire method on every other problem we come across and then you'll see how with harder problems it becomes a lot easier. What I used to do before I came across the umpire method was I would open a problem, read through it, and then my head would go blank. I didn't know how to start. I would feel very lost and very intimidated. So this is why I want to share this with you. So you won't be as intimidated and you'll know exactly where to start and where you need to take that problem. So what exactly is umpire? Umpire stands for understand, match, plan, implement, review, and evaluate. These are the six steps that we'll be taking every time we come across a problem. First one is understand. This one involves you reading the problem and understanding what it's asking of you. So beyond reading it, it also involves asking questions and talking to your interviewer. In these videos, we won't have an interviewer, so we'll just go over it uh, by ourselves, talking about what 
assumptions we can make and all these different things but during a real interview what you want to do is ask clarifying questions about the problem are there any edge cases that you want the solution to account for or are we assuming that these edge cases won't happen things like that so that you know exactly what is expected of you and what your code should be doing our second step in umpire is our m which stands for match with matching what you want to do is look at the problem you have in front of you and think of any other problems that you've done in the past that remind you of this one and see what you can apply to it when you're matching you want to think about what other problems you've done in the past that have to do with linked lists, with hash maps, with array lists, with uh, certain sorting algorithms, and try to draw connections with those. Our third step in this framework is our P for plan. When you're planning the way that you're gonna solve your problem, you are not coding yet. So notice how we're three steps in and we still haven't started coding. This is because you first want to know exactly your plan of approach so that then you don't waste any time with syntax or figuring out the flow of your solution. During the planning phase, what you'll do is just write pseudocode and this will make the rest of the steps a lot easier. Now, before moving on to the next step, what you want to do is go through your pseudocode with a sample input and see if you would be getting the required output that is asked of you and if it doesn't then you'll fix the pseudocode and try again with a test case and now we're finally in the coding stage so this step is all about implementation we are taking all of our understanding all of our matching our planning our pseudocode and we're implementing it into the code that we want to write for our solution. In this step, you can go through every section of your pseudocode and start writing your chunks of code that address those portions. After this step, you'll have your code, but you're not done yet. You still have two steps left. We have the reviewing stage where we will do similar testing to what we did with our pseudocode, but now we'll do it with our code. So we want to definitely test for an average case so your happy scenario your ideal case and you also want to test for some edge cases what if the input was a different type in some instances your interviewer will just tell you assume that it's always an integer so what other edge cases what if the integer was a negative or a very large number or a very small number what would happen what happens to your code specifically so this is all happening in the review stage and then last but not least in the slightest is our evaluate stage so in this stage is where you close off your problem with a conversation about performance here you'll talk about the time complexity and the space complexity of the problem whether it's happening in place whether the time it takes to process input will grow exponentially or logarithmically or any of those words that you've probably already seen but if you haven't we'll go over them in a later video now i know that was a lot that was definitely a lot and it'll be hard for you to remember it at times but that's why i'm creating these videos so that it'll help you go through that process and from repetition you'll start to implement that framework every single time you come across a problem so now for the first few problems you'll feel like you need to remind yourself like wait where was i on the umpire what that's totally fine that's what i was doing at the beginning but once you've practiced you'll start doing this all on your own and you'll as soon as you see a problem you'll start thinking about what does this remind me of and you'll start drawing connections with other problems so there we go that was the umpire strategy if you want to learn more about it you could just google umpire code path and all of their free resources will come up the explanations examples all of that it's an amazing organization that has some really really useful resources even if you're not taking their courses they have a lot of free resources online so you might find that helpful anyway i'll see you on the next problem